Hi, this video is about my uh, genealogy of games. Basically, it's like a family tree uh, starting back in the early 90s or late 80s when I started having a computer at home, like many others, and um, decided to play games. But of course, back then, we had like one good game after another, so we never really kept track of anything that went on during, back, during the days as we were just gaming the hours away. So I figured I would compile everything now that we're on our third generation and uh, make it nice and organized to look at. So starting out, like the first game, computer game I really played was Diablo. I wasted so many hours as that, on that game when I was a kid. And um, nowadays, uh, you can't actually get it anymore, but you can download um, it from a site. I'll have the link in the description, um, Diablo with Hellfire. And it's not online um, because um, it's really rare to find a Diablo 1 Battle.net, but this Diablo Hellfire, you can't play Hellfire on Battle.net anyways. And it's just a nice um, little story that allows you to play the whole monk and bard class that everyone was talking about in Barbarian. It's actually the source of these classes. Yeah, I'll show you the video right now. So basically, this story follows uh, a mage who... Uh, Summon another demon at the same time as Diablo. So you're actually playing on the same map. Hopefully this isn't too loud. I really love the fact that I could play this on my computer in this day and age. It was uh, licensed out to Sierra to create the game. And here you have all your usual classes, but you can also create a, a monk and a bard. I don't think you can create the uh, barbarian with this version, but it is there. So yeah, um, that's the game that started off for me. Oh, lagging, lagging, lagging. Okay, back into the 2015 now. I also have a Diablo 2. This one is actually connected to Battle.net. Um, it's on maintenance mode now, but you can uh, create a character and leave it there. So, and then after an expiry date, um, so long as no one takes your name, you're fine. I can't remember my account. See, I don't play this too often, but it's in Windows mode, so I can just go at it if I want. Then, of course, we have Diablo 3. Everyone's playing that on and off. But also, uh, back then, there was the Warcraft series. These games are so old, I have to run an emulator uh, just to be able to play them. So right now, on my timeline, I just have the um, picture the PNG picture. It's not actually there. Same thing for uh, World of Warcraft because I don't want to pay a subscription in Magic Gathering because no one's going to pay a subscription to play those games. Not in this day and age. So there's a really um, tremendous amount of free to play games right now from Hearthstone, Heroes of Storm, Dota, um, Path of Exile and just all sorts of great games that we can play for free. And then our oldie from the first generation here is my um, Dungeon Keeper. <laughs> it's really hard to uh, uh, play it with our modern conveniences and left clicking and hotkey binding. And even Diablo 1 to have a hard time playing the games because you don't have the option to change the key bindings right then and there. I have to actually um, program either my keypad or my mouse beforehand and just have a profile for that. But they're playable now and it's all about the bringing future technologies to the past and I'm like in God mode right now because I can go into different time periods when these games are made and just bring in all my uh, technology and uh, hotkeys and everything on, on triple monitors and just enhancing the experience becoming extremely overpowered so back into the timeline we have my Diablo timeline it's uninterrupted perfect sequel right after another. One, two, three. However, it branched out to this game here called Path of Exile, 
which is to me uh, the spiritual and DNA successor of Diablo 2 um, by Grinding Gear Games. They created a really good environment. It looks a lot. Oh, crap. It should not be in Windows mode, it should be on full screen. Mm, I'll wait for it to load later. But yeah, stuff like that has happened, and it's not the only game. Um, Dungeon Keeper 2, which was made by Bullfrog. Uh, was bought up by EA and then EA just destroyed the title made it uh, just sat on it for like some 20 odd years before they made it to an iOS game that sucked fortunately we have um, um, load here. Change the back to okay so this is Path of Exile This is the spiritual successor for Diablo 2. Oh, okay. So you can see it's more, much more darker and gritty. Let me turn on the enhancements. It's got much more the up, up, down, top down feel of uh, Diablo 2 and what it was meant to be. Its skill set. Is impressive. They put in the Final Fantasy skill tree into this, so you can move your star chart around for your passive skills. And there's just lots of um, things you can't see because I'm using this on widescreen. I have my keys all the way to the um, left and right. But yeah, so we have that spiritual successor to Diablo 2 over here, and then as I was saying, Dungeon Keeper 2. So EA sat on this title. And did nothing with it. So, a company called Grinding Gear Game or Subterranean Games, on once again on Steam, uh, decided to do their own thing and even hired the same uh, voice actor. Oh, fucking lights! There we go. To uh, do the narrate the narration of Dungeon Keeper, which is basically the uh, digging type of game. Oh, it's just taking so long to load. I'll just exit this. Oh, here we go. Now it's loading. Welcome back, Underlord. <laughs> so it's funny that uh, when you actually start the campaign for this, they'll say that you were actually destroyed and had to awaken and reincarnate. It's as if um, dungeon the events after Dungeon Keeper 2 never really happened. They even have the uh, whole campaign set up over here. It's so cute. It's time to kill two dwarfs with one stone. <laughs> the miserable midgets of the Dwarven Guard have bested rascal. Okay, good time to play in this video, man. Exit. So, I'm playing on widescreen in this again. I'm glad they have the support for it. It's just, I'm so not used to it. Then again, I have the controls, the super fast mouse that can move my arrow back and forth and my thumb key here to give me directions just like for any other strategy game. So we have here another spiritual and DNA successor. It's so closely resembled that I have to pretty much call it the successor to Dungeon Keeper 2. Now back in the 90s, I think this was 96, uh, StarCraft came up. I'm putting it as a, on the second generation in this row because there was no previous StarCraft game. Maybe I can uh, put in the late early 90s here, like it was inspired by Dune 2. But it is in and of itself uh, birthed from Blizzard, who created Warcraft. So I put it over here, and then of course it's direct descendant of StarCraft 2. I haven't found any spiritual successors to this, um, so I'm going to leave that blank for now. So you might be thinking, why is Warcraft 3 over here instead of over here? Well. It wasn't that much of a jump, I don't think, uh, between that era. And in terms of technology, it inspired um, the creation of Dota, uh, the defense of the ancients. And also, it was also when uh, Blizzard made a shift to M MMO, a new genre. So there was two genres born from this. Um, this is direct descendant, I guess, World of Warcraft. Though I would argue that World of Warcraft is an EverQuest clone, which I'll put over here. But Dota 
was the other thing. It's a MMO, oops, a MOBA, a multiplayer online battle arena. And that has also inspired League of Legends and led to the creation of this recent uh, game, Heroes of the Storm, which is essentially uh, from Dota, StarCraft, Warcraft, and Diablo. But I'm very hesitant to put that in the fourth generation, even though it's the newest, because we're not quite there yet. The fourth generation here, I'm going to save for EverQuest Next or Overwatch. Those games are clearly using newer technology that would, by the time they come out, um, make the technical and requirements to meet that, I think. So, at, during the same time uh, World of Warcraft came out, we had another game called Guild Wars, which is why I put it beside it. Like, future progressions I put over here. Guild Wars was a really different in how it combined the uh, Magic the Gathering type card game style with an MMO style. It wasn't a complete MMO. It was really skill based on such areas. But that's why I put it next to uh, card games over here. And these card games are constantly being updated, but I'm putting them in relation to the timing, the age timing when they came out. So Magic Gathering, obviously, it, this was out when I was in grades, in elementary school, pretty much. And on, they've developed their online since 2002, I think. But they kept on upgrading it. I just don't want to pay a subscription for it. But the game always changes. It's on Planeswalkers, and it's a really unique mechanic. Now, with Yu-Gi-Oh!, I mean, they have an anime with this game. And it's also, it's much faster pace. Magic Gathering, I can go, average is like 10 to 20 minutes. Yu-Gi-Oh! is 5 to 10 minutes. And Hearthstone is like uh, 3 to 5, 3 to 6 minutes. So you can see a progression here on how it's simpler, but different. And, diff and they incorporate different styles. So I don't want to say one is better than the other, but they definitely come out in different time frames. And they're constantly uh, developing themselves. With Yu-Gi-Oh! it's more of a community thing because it was developed by um, a community to be played on Flash Online for free. That's why I play a lot on this. I'm pretty sure there is a version for Magic Gathering 2 where online community decided to just say, screw it, Wizard of the Coast, we'll just make our own online thing. We'll just take your cards and rules and we'll put them in for fun. Hearthstone, of course, just came out, so it's very different. And it also has more interface and cartoonish conversations. There's so many little uh, caveats in here that make it stand out and unique in its own right. So I have my card games here and then Guild Wars 2 is the the best MMO I've ever played. It is a true MMO and it's still um, growing. Like third generation this bar here is where we're at right now and the games that I'm all playing. I have to catch up on some Dota 2 myself. This just came out. Alright, uh, starting in order. One, two, oh, I can't do the shift. So this one, this one, and this one just came out. This one's still coming out, actually. They're fixing bugs and everything. Um, this one and this one. Go Wars 2, Path of Exile are getting their first expansion. StarCraft 2 and Diablo 3 are getting their second expansions this year, hopefully. And I don't know, with regards to um, these two MOBAs here, it feels as though um, they may get an expansion I don't know how the mobile market works I may they may just rely on uh, free on DLCs and content to keep on growing and eventually move on to a second game which is why I suspect that overwatch Blizzard's uh, new IP is going to be right up there uh, to replace heroes of storm after um, it's run its course so I don't think there will be an expansion for these. It will be similar in regards to the card games and how they'll constantly improve, but there's really no new system to put them in because they'll just develop on top of their systems. Maybe Dueling Network can move on from Flash to uh, HTML5 so people can play on their iPads. But other than that... Um, the games themselves, of course, in, within the games, new releases come out all the time and they change that way. And I think that's to the extent they can change it. But in terms of a computer game, there's not much they can do in that regard. So what I'm really, I'm really looking forward to this year is StarCraft II's Legacy of the Void and whatever Diablo 3's um, next expansion will be, uh, the Photos Universes. 
it'll be a while before we even get Starfield. It was like what 14 years for Starcraft Brood Wars to um, uh, Wings of Liberty, and then another uh, 12 years from Lord of Destruction to uh, just Diablo 3. Those were some really long development cycles, which what was what caused the development of Path of Exile over here in Torchlight 2 because people just got sick of waiting. Starcraft 2, I don't know what you can do. But anyways, this is my um, tree overall. And uh, I'm trying to make characters that are born from one or the, born from one and then uh, move on and then grew um, or descended from another uh, tree in a timeline as well. It's just my little way of uh, creating little worlds and little homes uh, within cat characters or avatars to live in. Um, yeah, there's not much to say about that. But I am trying to... Uh, construct a more coherent tree and make it bigger as I progress. Uh, something to do with this timeline. Like I said before, I'm thinking of putting uh, Dune and Dune 2 right over here to inspire StarCraft. Because there were lots of sci-fi games that were pro probably um, descended or were the ancestors leading up to StarCraft. And I know for sure I have to put EverQuest here. That was the game that inspired uh, many other MMOs like Baldur's Gate and that series. So I can leave room for that, especially since EverQuest Next is coming, which will be a fourth generation. Um, so yeah, that's how I'll um, structure everything. And if a new game comes out that I haven't reviewed yet, I'll try and fit it into this timeline. And show how it uh, all comes together back from early pixels all the way to uh, do wielding multi-screened uh, direct 12 everything type of thing we're playing right now so yeah I guess this video is uh, pretty long but that pretty much explains my uh, reasoning and um, it just looks really cool so I'm just gonna keep doing this thanks for watching guys and have a great day see you next time